you know, wanted to talk about the NBA lockout today and uh, how ridiculous I think it is. You know, I've been a proud Detroit Pistons fan most of my life. And, uh, you know, just I'm really disgusted with the NBA right now. I uh, never ever seen a group or an organization of more selfish people than I ever have in my life. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, what your thoughts are on athletes, professional athletes. My thoughts are this, yes, they put in the work. Yes, they do, you know, have a lot of time away from their families. But at the same time, they're very spoiled. They're very arrogant. They're very, a lot of them are very self-centered. These NBA negotiations that have been going on for, it seems like, it's almost been a year now. It's been a long time since they've been going on. I really think it's ridiculous. Um, you know, I don't know how else to describe it other than that I think the players need to take what the owners are giving them. A lot of people do not like that opinion. And this is why I say that opinion. The owners ultimately are the ones that write the checks. The owners are the ones that put the money into the stadiums, supply people with jobs. Never ever should a player be worth more than the owner or an entire team. To me, the money that they're arguing about, I tell you, here, here's what they should do with the uh, money that they're arguing about and they should put it back into their local communities and help the local communities out that are struggling right now because you know these these NBA players are bickering about a few million dollars while the average American uh, struggles on a daily basis and you know lives from week to week based on their paychecks I mean that's and these athletes don't see that that while the country that is primarily based of a middle class country is struggling while they're making millions doing absolutely nothing. You know, there's people that I know that work 50, 60, 70 hours a week that uh, can't afford, they can't afford to hardly keep a house can't afford to keep their vehicles, can't afford to keep groceries in their cupboards. And these basketball players have the audacity to sit here and argue about a few million dollars. You know, it's to me, no one's forcing you to play the game of basketball. No one put a gun to your head and said, hey, you got to play basketball or else this and this and this is going to happen to you. It's... To me, it's totally outrageous. Um, um, I just, <laughs> it's really, really hard for me to describe how I feel about this because I am a very proud Detroit Pistons fan. As you can see, I don't a lot of Detroit stuff. Um, and the reason and there's another reason I'm wearing uh, the whole reason I'm wearing my Red Wings hat is because I'm a hockey fan right now. There is no basketball to me. The NBA miles will be dead and non-existent. You know, the thing of it is, is baseballs learned from their mistake. Hockey's learned from their mistake. The NFL learned from what could have been a mistake, and they all are operating fine right now. This would be the second lockout that's happened in a matter of a decade which is ridiculous. That tells me the NBA is full of prima donnas, gold diggers, crybabies, spoiled brats, and they don't play for the love of the game. They have, to me, football, you, 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 they, they want to bicker about the physicality and whatnot of their game. 
football and hockey are a lot more physical than basketball. Okay. You know, that's what I'm trying to get at. Basketball, you run up and down the court for 48 minutes and try to shoot a basket. Okay, yeah. Okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm underplaying that and not giving enough credit. Yes, basketball players are great athletes and it takes a lot of work to be a great basketball player. But these guys in the NBA, the majority ain't playing for the love of the game. They're playing to see how much money they can get. And to me, the NBA models will be dead. The NBA models will be non-existent. And basketball in America might as well not even exist. Because the owners aren't going to budge. I can tell you right now that, and I do not blame these owners for not budging. They need to, they need to be able to financially support their buildings, be able to pay the concession workers and all the other people that work in the arena, and they need to be able to, you know, pay the front office guys. You know, these basketball players. You know, no one, like I said, no one forced them to sign on the dotted line. No one forced them to, you know, play the game that they supposedly love. You know, I just, I shake my head, I mean, you know, at a time where the country needs something to look forward to, like a basketball game, you guys aren't there. Two sports are going on right now, football and hockey. Football's already popular. Football's been popular for a long time, you know, but I see hockey rising. I see ro hockey's popularity growing because of the whininess and crybabiness of the NBA Players Association and, you know, the whole struggle, I mean, really. Billy Hunter, Derek Fisher, all you guys would want more and more and more and more and more. And I'm honestly on the owner's side. Because like I said, the owners are the ones that put up, put up the money for the buildings. The owners are the ones that have to pay the concession workers and the arena workers. The owners are the ones that have to pay people in the offices and whatnot. And the owners ultimately pay you. Actually... If you really think about it, it's the fans that pay you your contracts. And you're depriving your fans of not playing right now. You're depriving your fans of not watching you get on the court. And it's disgusting. And I honestly don't think the NBA is going to recover from this. Or at least it's going to be a long, long time before they recover from this. I mean, like I said, two lockouts in a matter of a decade all over nothing all over a few million dollars okay yes I know what is it last I checked 400 million dollars I think it was come on get over it just be glad you're getting a little piece of the pie these owners <laughs> these owners I don't blame them for sticking to their guns you know <coughs> and uh you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really angry with the NBA right now. But like I said, I've been a loyal, loyal Detroit Pistons fan for a long time since I was a kid. And to not see my Detroit Pistons be playing on the court of Auburn Hills Palace makes me sick. It makes me sick that there's no basketball. It makes me sick that these guys can't come to agreement. And it makes me sick. That these players don't understand that the average American is struggling every day, every week, every month, every year, while they sit around and make their five to six million dollars a deal on average. The lowest income player at an NBA level, I think, is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and that's just being on the bench. So you tell me right now, what are you going to do, NBA? What are you going to do, Billy Hunter? What are you going to do, David Stern? What are you going to do 
to uh, correct this mistake because it's ridiculous. You know, like I said, I'm an angry fan. I'm an angry sports enthusiast who loves every sport in, in some way, shape, or form of another. Basketball was one of my favorite sports. I have no respect left for the game of basketball in America because of this lockout. And I really hope, I really hope the players are happy with themselves. And I hope they realize that they lost a lot of fans and lost a lot of respect. And that's all I'm going to say on this. I just, I, I just been wanting to rant about this for a while now. But this is ridiculous. As a fan, I'm disgusted. And, you know, that's it for me on this rant. Um, post your comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. It's funny. Yeah, I just... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. But anyways, like I said, thanks for listening, thanks for tuning in, and see you next time.